Hey guys, it's Chris Savile, returning again after a few years or so. So I wanted to test out a new tool I got advertised to on Instagram. So it's called Shark Pixel, and they do a lot of different stuff, but the cheaper one, cheaper products I saw like and I could really afford, it's like $27 or something like that, I don't remember exactly. It's called like AI presets, basically. So I definitely wanted to try it that on my work you know it's making claims that I could like make it a lot quicker than like going into like Photoshop and like manually doing like you know retouching on a photograph which I've been doing you know hardcore like model retouching type of work on for like the last 13 years it definitely takes about like an hour in Photoshop by itself like an image usually Sometimes an hour and a half, sometimes 45 minutes. It depends on what is going on on the image. But the Lightroom plugin for the AI, you know, with AI being in the end per se right now, even though it's been around for a while, but this this is a different type of AI where it's like much more advanced in the year 2023 now, which I'm definitely intrigued to try and, and see if it actually re re reduces my time into touching the same quality standards than I would be in Photoshop, which I really doubt right now. Just to give you a pretense. I really doubt it could do that, at least right now. But we'll see. Let's try it out. And this this video is just a first impressions. I never used Shark Pixel. I just see videos and advertisements and stuff like that and like how to use somewhat of like how to use it. Completely unbiased an objective somewhat review but it's more of a first impressions we'll do it in depth review after i use it for like maybe six months to a year i don't i, I like to like give like really in-depth reviews i don't want to give like preemptive a complete review so i'll have to wait give it some time and see how it soaks into my regular workflow uh, and i don't really shoot that much anymore so like but yeah, uh, let's get into it right now and let's just see how it flows. It's already edited per se, but in in um, Lightroom, and basics my basic you know measurements right there. But we're gonna grab a random one, uh, probably the same scene. Just so maybe give a little comparison, like this one. I mean, this one's completely out of focus, obviously. That's why I didn't pick it. All right, that's a reset. So that's this is uh my version. This is the original, completely different. But um, if you see my work, it's very, uh, some of the work I do is very moody, very dark. And, I, and like, you know, I wish I had a better camera where I could just pull a lot more detail from the shadows and post, but I don't. You know, the more, the most ideal camera I, I could definitely help with my own personal style is like an AS, uh, what's it called? A7S series, or like obviously the later version either three or four i mean i don't know if it's four is out yet but that would definitely improve what you can see here because this is obviously out of focus but when you zoom out it looks okay to me you know, that's fine with me we're not going to print it on like a 30 by 20 or something like that but we definitely pulled a lot from that from the raw now we're going to try just using the presets from shark pixel uh, now they broke into like multiple parts you know eyes face hair lip skin and Subject. I assume subject means the whole thing. Now I am running on a on a top level computer, so it's definitely taking some time. The only thing that's not top level is the GPU. <laughs> GPU is on a, a G a GeForce GTX 1060 on video card, so it's not the fastest. So I think this is like adding a haze. So it is a haze, which I do like a lot. I mean, maybe this one more. Oh, this this is cool too. As a Click polish. Not sure what it is, but maybe see from what it looks like. Um, Shark Pixel is not going to color correct, obviously. So maybe we should do this the, on the one that's color corrected, actually. So we're gonna go back to the virtual copy of the original state where I did color correct it, because it looks like from from what I see, the Shark Pixel has nothing to do with anything with colors. It has like it doesn't ha it doesn't adjust like the whole overall image, only like certain methods of the vibe or whatever like you'll, you'll see here like the, the background haze it'll, it'll, it'll add some haze which is really cool 
it adds some interesting element to it, an interesting vibe. I, I clicked on this background spot, which I have no idea what it is. The background haze is pretty cool. I like that. It gives it a good dynamic and cinematic feel to the shot. Which I do I, I do have in my style of photography. I'm checking out the other one. See, this one this definitely does feel a little bit too dark, but definitely adds a, an interesting look to the background to me. Yeah, this one's better. I mean, to me, it looks a little bit too much, like too, too sharp. And it, when I say sharp, I mean like sharp end. Let's try that one. Let's try a little bit down. Uh, Eighty-seven seems okay. But it definitely made the darks a lot darker. Which I, I want to see detail a little bit more, which we didn't check. Oh, the spot, the background spot. Eh, background spot could work. I do this on Photoshop myself, honestly, but not like this. I, I do, I do it like more specific, like more, more complicated than just on the face, obviously. Yeah, this one's pretty cool. What is this? Dark and sky. It's in, it's in nighttime. So I prefer not the dark and sky subject pop. Interesting. So it makes it, this is what I do on, on Photoshop anyways. Subject pop and it adds a haze a little bit. And we could just add it, but only a little bit. Oh, oh, it's a hard one. It's not that bad actually. The thing is that it adds like this right here, it adds a lot more noise to it. it adds a lot of noise. Trying to remove this preset. The thing is that I don't think you could have more than one. I, but I did see like a video or something about it where you could, but I, don't, I really don't want to go through like a whole tutorial series just to like learn how to use this. I'd rather just see how I feel and learn on my own, you know? Let's see. I just don't like it being like super noisy here. I, I Even though I am shooting at natural light, Thing is that I like to control as much as I can on how much noise it shows. I mean, I could I, I could use masking. Up. It's still there. I think it was there the whole time. I mean, when I clicked on this, probably. Let's show. Look at this one. See, see, bring in the the what you call it. When I click polish, it made it more evened out. So I brought up the shadows. It added a lot more noise. A lot of noise. Subject pop. Subject bright. This is like more ideal probably for like shooters who use um, flash outside, which I don't do much. Very, very minimal. Well, this is pretty cool. I like, I like, um, what's it called? Desaturated, um, background, backgrounds. I, I do like that sometimes. I do like the subject to be very, not overly saturated, but like a little bit saturated, like uh, quite 10, 20% usually, uh, on the subject and the wardrobe and stuff like that. That is supposed to pop from the scene in, in my eyes. The, the original state was this more like that. Be sure that's more like my original that I had. Yeah, that's my original. So that's my original of my own color correction. And this is uh, the shark pixel um, with color pop or whatever. Uh, it's called Vignette Subject Protected 01. And I also add like a click polish. I don't know if I kept that or not. The haze is definitely really interesting. Let me see if I can add it. Does it add it? Yeah, I think it does. See, it looks okay. I just don't like the right here which I could take and probably in so I don't use masking on, on Lightroom I usually always use it on Photoshop that's how much I'm much more slower right, it's my version shark pixels version I mean it's very different obviously but you could definitely see a lot more uh, color noise on the shark pixel one than mine Let's 
right. It's, it's a lot more color noise, a lot more noise in general than mine. Mine, you could definitely see is like more smoother. It is more exaggerated. And you're trying to bring back the details. That's what you're trying to do. Yeah, I see it. Which one do you guys prefer? I don't know. I do like the haze look. It I, I definitely is really cool. He does pop a lot more hair here, obviously. And this is this is like more like a subtle, like a moody, a moody shot. This is more about him. Added in obviously, but I like movie shots too. Like it's it's a it's got like a heads and tails side on this. Either or could work. And I have to do like color grading as well. But is there color grading on on this on a shark pixel? Not really. I think color grading is a lot harder on Lightroom in my opinion. Like I mess with these, but that's gone. Man, it's so annoying to mess with these. Person to like Photoshop. I wouldn't mess with the other ones right here. The eyes, it's no point in messing with the eyes if it's like more like a dark shoot. This is a night shoot. We did some day shots, but I didn't do close up of his eyes. So, as a face, I don't think messing with the skin is a good idea with guys, in my opinion. Let's see what it does though. I'm just curious. And that's it for this, this shot at least. We might mess with another shot, but you guys got that first impressions for sure. Probably grab one that's already like fully edited. All right, so this is another shot when I went to London, and uh, and then I did edit this in Photoshop as well. I do Lightroom, then Photoshop. Let's show you the before and the after. It's the before. So we're in Photoshop, and um, you can't see it right here because it's for some reason the capture on OBS is not showing it. I don't know why. I'm like, literally zooming in and out right now, but. I'll show you the before and after. This is right after the Lightroom. And this is right after all the retouching I did. All the retouching I did. I don't remember how long it took me. Probably like 30, 40 minutes without the retouching. With retouching. I don't like to overly retouch as some people like to do, but I don't like to overly retouch. But to make it clean and within my standards, this is the way it looks. It is clean and within my standards. Now let's try the same thing on Shark Pixel. I'm just curious how it would look. We're gonna do a quick one. All right, so I'm gonna try a quick one right here with Jojo. As I mentioned before, uh, this is a before and after of this one right here. Before right here is the after. And the Photoshop version right here. This is a Photoshop version using a virtual copy right here and see if Shark Pixel can cut my time in retouching in Photoshop either by half or more. Let's start with, um, I'm not sure about the eyes because like the eyes is dark, but we could try something. Let's try something. It's brown, a dark brown. Let's see if it does anything. Well, I made it darker. Okay. Interesting. There's, there is no dark, dark brown to make it light brown. It makes it darker though, that's for sure. I don't want to do. We could soften her, her whites, my whites. Okay, I see what it does. This might be useful. I mean, I, I don't normally do that on my retouching. I'll touch the whites. Very rarely I do. Unless it's like very veiny and very red, and I would touch it. It's like extremely rare in the last like 13 years I've been shooting. I did it probably like what, five or six times. Eyes sharpening. Let's see. The sharpen two is a lot more sharp. Sharpen three. Uh, adds a lot, uh, some darkness to it. I think the one and two more acceptable for my standards. I don't do sharpening in eyes, by the way. It's like, unless they, it's extremely rare as well. I don't touch the eyes and retouching. I mean, let's say it's like really close up and headshots. Headshots, I will touch the eyes more a 
lot more than a shot like this. That, that it's like, is there any point to really touch up the eyes, honestly? I mean, like this far away. You can, I mean, you can probably tell it's brighter. That's for sure. Look at the catch light. Fill in eyes. What is this? Oh, I see what it does. Eyebrows. I misread it. I, misread it. I do this in, in post, but not, not excessive. Okay, so we added soften eye whites, and then we added sub sharpen, and we added eyebrows before and after. Okay, that's good. I'm liking it. All right, let's go back face, uh, light skin, eyes brighten. The thing is that the way they brighten eyes is a little bit excessive <laughs> for me. Honestly, it's a little bit excessive. Hey, I just realized what did they do to her face? They also like, it's not, I don't think they're adding some contrast to the whole face and like selectively, selectively making her eyes, like her colored, color part of her eyes brighter to a point where you could see noise in it and being introduced. Now, if it was like a, a studio shoot, it'd be a different story, but I mostly shoot natural light. I don't like overall add-in contrast and like this basic i have no idea what basic means i assume it's not skin smoothing ah is it skin smoothing not really not really no all right let's go beauty and that's skin smoothing is it a lot i mean for me it is it is what i do frequency retouching sometimes I usually do dodge and burn as my as my skin. This is too much. It's basically adding a, a lot of makeup to her, in my opinion. Like look at that red lipstick. Like, well, I don't need adding lipstick to her. That's crazy. I mean, she has her own lipstick, obviously. She has lipstick, but it's making it a lot darker where it's just way too much. I like salty. This uh, Shrek pixel is, is just adding it too much. I mean, you can try it. You can try it. It's just down in it to like ten percent. You can't really see the difference, can you? So the amount of preset right here is lowering, lower, lowering the amount on everything, not just this preset right here. Because I had the eyes, I had the, the eyebrows. Like you can see it right there, because it looks darker and it's brighter and sharper on the eyes. And the eyes are softened. But I just want the skin and, and everything else, like, not too extreme. It's crazy. Before, after. Before, after. It's okay. I just need to lower the lipstick. The lipstick is bothering me. So they're all together. That's the problem. I'm going to take this off entirely. It is this some skin smoothing, by the way. No. This some skin smoothing. But you can still definitely see blemishes on there. Let's check out something else. Interesting. I do like that brighten hair. See the more details. She has nice hair. I don't I don't care for colors. She has dark hair? No. Uh, the, these colors are convincing actually. I do like it. it's added it basically the, the AI is figuring out where is eyes, where is the lips, where is the hair. I do like that. It does save a lot of time. So I, I, I'm i going to keep the brighten hair, like the first letter, first layer. The lips has its own thing. I'd rather not touch the, touch the lips, honestly. Oh, I sharpened it a lot. Sharpened, yeah, selectively, the, the AI selectively sharpened her lips. Can't tell a difference from one and two. 
I see what it is now. I'm far away. Okay. What else? Uh, not gonna add color. In. There's no teeth to do to, to do teeth white in. All right, skin. I mean, we already did the skin already. It was basically included like a like a whole package. We should do the face. I mean, to do skin is gonna include her arm and her face. I think. I like to shine. Why did we do shine? I like to shine. I like the highlights. Especially on this one. Fix redness. I can't tell what it's doing, honestly. Right, that's enough. So basically, that's all you can do, really. It's not much you can do on this one. You can't do, you can't do frequency separation, obviously, with this. All it does is it... It smooths out the skin a little bit. You need to like definitely go on Photoshop to like you know, not blemish this and stuff. So either way, even though like I I use frequency separation a lot of times, but I still need to like manually remove blemishes. Either way, I'll do before and after on just the face. It does look sharper, that's for sure. I mean, the eyes is definitely much sharpened. Skin looks a, a little bit softer, but not a lot softer. It has good subtlety, which is good. Will this reduce my, my time? I'm not too sure. Like, I rather, if I, I don't want to sacrifice qual overall quality and control. This, this definitely looks good. Like, I don't normally touch the hair, honestly. I mean, unless they have like really crazy hair, you know, or like if they're blondes or whatever, then it would highlight a little bit more. On the blonde hair, but if it was like brunette, like uh, or black hair, something like that. Then I don't really touch it too much. Uh, this looks hard, this good on her, honestly. This this look, it's not perfect by any means, but it definitely has to go back in Photoshop. And I don't know if it would would it reduce my time, honestly. Like, I don't think it would, honestly. I'll definitely have to send it either way to Photoshop. So that was it. Make sure you follow me on Instagram under Chris Anvil if you want to see more of my work or if you want to see reels, which I plan to post more reels on like how to stuff and instructional stuff eventually. It's in the works, so keep an eye on there. I'll post it there first and then after like maybe like a week or so, now I'll post it onto like shorts on YouTube. Because like the, the, the reels, I think I want to make multi focus on Instagram and TikTok now and then i'll post it like a week later to my youtube shorts because yeah, like i want to like drive as much traffic from youtube from the, the long form content on youtube to my instagram and my tiktok so tiktok and instagram chris Apple. make sure you follow it and you can check out more content to come peace out